Okay, we are just going to get started today. So thank you so much, everyone, for coming. This is the Mentors at De Anza UC CSU Transfer Panel. And then if we go to the next slide, we are just going to have an outline of um, what's the agenda for today. We're just going to talk about our program and how the event is going to run. And then the panelists will introduce themselves and we'll get time to do questions and answers before the ending where we're going to all break out into breakout rooms. And you can ask more tailored specific questions to like possibly the school or the major. And then we'll just have some last minute comments and then that'll be it. And then moving on to the next slide, we're just gonna talk about mentors really quickly um, by our lead mentor, Victor. Hi everyone, uh, just a little introduction for me. Um, so Mentors at De Anza is a peer mentorship program that uh, was originally found around fall 2020. Uh, we're under the Office of College Life at De Anza. Uh, pretty much our program is just to connect first year students with uh, more experienced you know, De Anza students, whether that's like a second year or a third year. Uh, pretty much just helping you guys out when it comes to planning your courses, you know, the application process and just getting to know um, the opportunities and extracurriculars that are available on and off campus. And then for community guidelines, the way this is going to work is you can put any of the questions that you have into the chat. We'll have some moderators write them down. And then um, myself or Tracy, my vice chair, will ask the panelists the questions later. You can also private message them to any of us that have the mentor's background in the back. And then just to let everybody know, this Zoom will be recorded and we will publish this later on. And we should have captions on as well, but if anybody needs any help or anything, just um, message any of us and we'd be happy to help. So now moving on, if all the panelists just wanna share a little bit about themselves, like their name, major, year they transferred, any additional information and stuff like that. Starting with Audrey. Oh, sorry about that. Um, hello, my name's Audrey. I'm majoring in psychological science. Uh, my pronouns are she, hers. And I transferred in 2023 uh, to University of California, Irvine. Um, my current career goals is to become an academic counselor in the future. So I'm hoping to get my master's in counseling. And it's nice to meet you all. And it, I'm glad that you're able to join us today. Um, hi, everyone. My name is EJ. I'm majoring in environmental economics and policy. I go by he, him. I actually transferred this past fall to UC Berkeley. And right now, my career goals surround mostly environmental policy research. So I'm just dancing around that area right now. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Isaac. Um, I study electrical engineering and computer science at Berkeley. Uh, you see him pronouns. And I transferred um, in fall 2024. So this is my first semester at Berkeley. And uh, I guess for my career goals, um, it would be some sort of engineering role, um, hopefully uh, leaning a bit more uh, on the hardware side. Um, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Yeah. Hello, my name is Kimberly Martinez and currently I know this is SJSU. That's the school I transferred to it back in fall of 2022, which feels like kind of a long ago. But <laughs> but um but luckily I graduated this May, so yay. Um and currently I'm studying counseling at Santa Clara University for my master's. Um and like Audrey, my career goal is also to be an academic counselor someday. Um so yeah, I'm kind of working towards that currently. Hello everyone, so my name is Natalie, and then um, my major is MPB, Neurobiology, Physiology, and Behavior, like only Davis have it, apparently, and then pronouns are uh, she, her, and I transferred fall 2024 as well, and this is my first quarter in Davis, and then um, my career goals, um, I want to become a physical therapist, so I'm a pre-PT.
Hi everyone, my name is Rhea. I am majoring in business administration and my pronouns are she, her. I transferred to UC Berkeley this last fall. So this is my first semester here. And then my career goals are um, surrounded around corporate sustainability and business. Okay, thank you thank to all. You. Oh. Sorry, go. Thank you to all our panelists who shared. That was great to hear about all of your majors and where you ended up going as a De Anza alumni. Now we'll be heading into our Q and A portion of our transfer panel, and just just to start off, we'll start off with an easier question. And to all our panelists, how was your transition from a community college to a university like? Well, um, no one is speaking, so I guess I'll go first. Um, I think the transition between community college and university, um, there, you can definitely see that there is some sort of um, transition in some sort of way that um, once you get into like university, um, a four year university, um, at least from my experience, the intensity is definitely higher. Um, you need to have better time management in some sort, but at the same time, it's not like as like horrific as like some people might say it. Um, and generally speaking, um, I do enjoy uh, just learning more in my subject. So I think like generally speaking, the transition has been pretty good and there has been like quite a lot of support on, you know, helping you ease in that environment. So that's my take. Yeah, so I also agree with what Isaac say. Like in terms of the class, like workload, I feel like, like, you know, Davis and Deanza, they are like the same quarter system. So I mean, class-wide for transition, I think it's not that a big difference. So I feel like the transition is pretty smooth, except that, like as Isaac say, like you need to have better time management because in university, I feel like the classes uh, workload is a bit harder and bigger. So like you need to make sure you manage your time well, otherwise you're gonna cram all the study material between within like a few days before your exam. And yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Do you want to speak you or? You can go first. Okay. Uh, for me personally, like, uh, we just had, like, I just had, like, my first set of midterms, uh, last week. And I do have to say, when it comes to the transition, since it's semester, we definitely spend more time on material. But then my study habits from De Anza to Berkeley definitely would not, did not work. I had to switch everything up. Um, because everything is, the course load, I would agree, is, like, mostly the same for, like, my major, even, but then looking at um, when I first got to Berkeley, I was really excited to, like, be taking my classes, so I think that made things easier, because, like, the topics that we cover is, like, are really interesting and fun, especially if you love your major, um, Yeah, basically kind of just echoing what everyone else has said. Um, it's definitely like a bit of a culture shock when you first transfer in just because the classes and the rigor is definitely different from what it was like at De Anza. You definitely have to have more of like a schedule and like be consistent on all of your like classwork and assignments. Otherwise, you will like fall behind a lot easier than than you were at De Anza. Um, But I think for me, it hasn't been like that bad just because Unlike some of the other UCs, um, Berkeley is on a semester system and coming from De Anza into a quarter system to semester system, I have found it to be like a little bit slower in like the pace of classes, which has definitely been like a little bit nicer to get to experience after like having a quarter system at De Anza. Um, but yeah, like everyone said, it is like a lot more like hard for the classes, but it just takes a little bit of adapting too within the first few weeks, which is why like a lot of people say to take like an easier co course load your first semester or quarter, which is definitely very helpful. 
I do agree with like what everyone said be, uh, previously. Um, for me, the transition, I would say, would be was kind of challenging because I did have to move quite like a distance away from where I lived. Um, I currently live in SoCal. Uh, so that's like six hours away from my um, uh, where my permanent address is. Um, I will say, yes, you, it's a lot of relearning your study habits and uh, your time management skills, because unlike De Anza, even though we're both like a quarter system, it's less weeks for you to uh, study and manage your classes. Here at like UCI, it's only 10 weeks per quarter. So it goes by very fast. So having like an effective time management, as everyone has said, uh, is very crucial. Yeah, uh, I also I know this sounds very repetitive, but <laughs> I do I do agree with everybody else. I think y'all gave really good insight, and I love hearing you guys' personal experiences. Um, to be honest, I think in my experiences of transitioning, because especially as a like a, a like coming from like mostly like online courses, right, and especially because. This sounds, this sounds like I'm old, but when I used to go to De Anza, I took like all online courses, right? So transitioning from like online to in court, like in person, it was a bit like, it was a bit stressful because I was low-key like, oh my God, who do I talk to? Um, so I think that was a little bit stressful for me. I guess that social aspect of like, how do I make friends or like um, what clubs to join or stuff like that. Um, that was a bit of a shock for me I guess um and then um and then also like how you guys mentioned going from a quarter system and SJSU is a semester system I think I think I was kind of used to the quarter system so it was a bit of, like a shift because it's more slower and more like at pace I guess um but in some courses it does help me because I struggle a lot in math and for and for some reason I don't know I found the quarter system like very fast paced when it comes to math and then the semester system, it, it kind of felt more like easier, I guess. I don't know. That's just that's just me though. Um, but yeah. Just a reminder, everybody, you can totally send in your questions in the chat or direct message any of us. But talking about the culture shock and how transferring was a lot different than Deanza, how was everybody's experience with class sizes? I will say it's it's way bigger. Like the class sizes at De Anza, I would say they're kind of like, oh, 20 to 30 students. So you have more time to interact with the professor. Um, at my university, some of the classes, since I'm in psychological sciences, there's a lot of people in my major. So it's around like, you would have around like 200 to 300 students in like one lecture room. So it can be hard and maybe a little bit intimidating to try to talk to the professor, but I do highly encourage um people to do so uh, like or like if you have questions just to go to office hours um but yeah the class size is definitely a bigger upgrade than what um, De Anza has yeah honestly the classes are a lot bigger because my major is a, a bit more niche but like it's basically double the regular class size so like 50 60 students for me and then like our lab or discussion periods for like maybe like 10 to 30 people if anything but then I, I do have like an American cultures course which is like required at Berkeley uh, for graduation and those would have like for me I'm thinking environmental justice there's like 200 people in there and yeah because a lot of people just need to get their requirement done so. Yeah, like everyone said, the classes are definitely a lot bigger, but I also think it depends on your major. Um, for me, for Haas, Haas is a lot smaller within the classes, which is something that I really liked and a reason why I want to attend. So we have typically like maybe like 50, 60 students in our classes um, and you get to know a lot more people. But then um, outside of that, for example, from like my data science classes, one of my classes right now, we have 1600 people in the class because it's only offered by one professor. So like you do have to take a lot more like initiative and time to reach out to your professor or talk to your GSIs if you need help or if you're like falling behind on anything because 
I feel like at De Anza, there was a lot more focus on the students. It was a lot smaller. So like you could reach out to your professor really easily or if you're falling behind. But um, here at like Berkeley, you kind of have to take that initiative yourself to like reach out um, because of how big the class sizes are. Um, for me, kind of similar as what everyone is saying, for my major at um, MPB in Davis is also one of the popular major actually. So um, the average class size maybe is like 200, 300 in my class. And also um, for myself, I have some lower deficient classes that I haven't finished in the answer. That's why I need to finish it in Davis. And yeah, definitely um you 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 can expect like a very different um number of students in the class, like from maybe 30 or 40 something to like 200, 300. And I think definitely as everyone say, the time that or space that you can spend with other student like interacting with other student interacting with professor it is more limited with that um big class sizes so yeah you really need to um reach out um and take the initiative and for some of my classes they have like the study sessions so i found that really helpful as well because in such a big class sizes some professors they are, they still have some a smaller group study session that can tailor to a more individual maybe tutoring time so yeah I think that's that's a pretty good aspect in the very big class sizes of having this um, study session yeah. um, okay in my experience at SJSU I'm not gonna lie I'm gonna also say it kind of depends. Um, and I'm gonna say, I think it depends on like, like, you know, like those prereq courses you kind of need to take before you take everything else. I feel like those classes are the classes that are probably more, I guess, larger in students. But at SJSU, I never had like, like over, I never had like a bunch of classes that were over like 100 students or more than like, at least like 50 students. I think, I think most of my classes were pretty, like not small, well, they're not really weren't they weren't that small, but I think they were like okay to the point where you could know your professor a little bit more personally. But I wouldn't say like I had a bunch of courses where like where like we had like a hundred and fifty students or something. I think I've only had like two classes like that, like within those two years of being at SSU. And I will say that is overwhelming because I think in one of my courses where we had a bunch of those students, I'm gonna kid you not. We did not have enough chairs for those students. So it was kind of like, it was crazy. It was very crazy. But, um, but yeah. Yeah, I do want to mention like the whole prereq thing because uh, Berkeley, I, d I didn't, I wasn't aware that was a prereq, but it was like basically like a data science course for my major. But then it's like a prereq for like a lot of other majors. And so it made as a trans, I wasn't able to get it as a transfer because there's like a lot of continuing students who also need to take it as well and they have priority. So like, I'm like one of the few people in my major who have to like push it until later. And like, we can't do it like our required upper division um like math classes because of it. And so we're just like, oh, oh well, I guess we're behind. <laughs> Do any of our panelists have any more to add about this question? Okay, if not, we just received another question and it's from one of our participants in the panel and they asked, what do you think was the most significant thing you did at Dianza that made you stand out on your transfer application? Um, I guess at the end, uh, like the biggest thing I did, like I don't like personally, I don't see it as a really big thing, but I guess when I look back on it, it was it was a 
pretty big thing. I was just a peer mentor for Impact API Danza. And I I talked about it with like so much grace. Like I said, like when I was writing my PIQ, I said I loved working with the students and like getting to plan events and like hang out with them. And then especially working directly with our counselor. And I feel like Berkeley appreciates when you take time to just be with your community. I agree, because I was also a peer mentor for Impact, so represent Impact API, yeah. But um, yeah, I would say that was one of the bigger things since it had to do with more of what I wanted to do in the future, which is to be like a academic counselor. So I like got to work with students, which I really loved. And then I mentioned that like similar to EJ in my application. And I believe that would have been the most significant thing. Um, but yeah, I guess like for if you're trying to write your application, it would be more of like towards if you did something like impactful for your community or just getting involved on campus can be good things to write about. Yeah, I think, um, I think, like um when like i think uc cares a lot about um first of all leadership and second of all um your passion about like one specific thing that preferably is related to your major um so at the end i was a tutor for the uh, math and science tutoring center which i guess kind of closely relates to that to my major um and just I, I I think that they want to see like a prolonged time of you like in, being interested in like dedicated dedicating yourself in like one specific thing that you like to do. So I think that is something that probably stood out. Um and I guess the other thing um is leadership. So um I was kind of actively involved at the ANZA, um, like student government and some 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 sort of like that. Um, so I, I also think that they like to see leadership experiences. Yeah, I kind of agree with what everyone else was saying. Um, like Isaac mentioned, I think especially like UC Berkeley and like when I was talking to a lot of other Haas transfers, they all had like um a lot of leadership positions that they presented themselves in. Um, and that was a common theme that I saw with like other transfers that I met, um, whether it was like through student government or like through clubs or even like through positions outside of school as well. I know like some people had internships or other programs that they were a part of, but just like dedicating yourself to something that you're actually passionate about. Um, because I definitely think that if you're passionate about something that you're doing, it'll definitely display and show within your application. Um, so like just making sure that like you're involved and you can have a leadership role within that. Um, that's for me personally. Like I think that was the thing that stood out the most for me. I was kind of pretty involved at De Anza and I really loved like all of the different things I did get involved in. And so when I um, joined all those things and writing those essays was a lot easier because like I actually enjoyed it and I was actually passionate about it. Um, and then just another thing is like, it is great to have things that are related to your major. I would definitely recommend having like at least a few things, but then if you're interested in like something outside of your major as well, like that's also great to add onto the application as well. Cause like, it'll show that you're passionate about it. Um, and you can always tie it in, in different ways as well. So that's also something I would say. I guess like just, I know that I, I'm speaking again, but um, something like, I guess for if you're a bit more to the STEM side, um, if you can get a research, that would be, that probably helps a lot. Um, tutoring helps a lot. Um, and even like projects that like you are passionate about and you can talk about like how some project, even if it's like personal, or whatsoever, how that like how what what you learned from it, I think um, especially Berkeley Berkeley really likes seeing that. So just to add on, I 
Okay, moving on to the next question. What was your experience joining clubs as a transfer student? I can start. Um, so for joining clubs, uh, UCI has like this big event. I I think it's called, I want to say it's called Welcome UCI. <laughs> it's been a while, but um, where they have all the different like clubs and organizations on campus, it could be like, yeah, different clubs, um, different campus organizations, which you can get involved with. Like there's different like volunteer organizations organizations I joined a volunteer organization but um and there's just like a whole bunch of different resources uh in like Aldrich Park so it's a huge event with like around like 200 I want to say 200 different organizations which can be a little overwhelming but it helps you get more involved in like what you want to do and find like what clubs you want to join there's even like different social clubs and cultural clubs uh if you're interested in that and honestly like for like my university there's a lot of things that you can try to look into and opportunities for students to get involved i think for me as a transfer student joining clubs i found it actually harder actually like because you know you are third year right now in a university and, but you are actually first year in Davis. But to be honest, people don't actually know that you're first year in Davis. They just thought that, oh, you're third year in Davis. And most, most clubs that are recruiting like new members, they are usually looking for first year because like, you know, first year is what they're looking for, like college life or something. And I feel like at this age, at our like year in college, maybe we are not as the, as like welcome ish by by the club and um the club people, so I feel like, but yeah, don't don't let this discourage you. I feel like you need to be more like maybe active to seek the club that you want, and I feel like as a transfer, you also have a clearer goal of what clubs you want to join because you already have some exposure in the answer right. So at least you will have a clearer um, objective of what club you want to go in and then you you will go there and join, uh, be an intern or get some leadership um, pos um, position at, at any cost. So yeah, I feel like definitely um, actively seeking more of clubs. And in my, in UC Davis, they have like an involvement fair thing um, I think it's in each every quarter. And then in Boffin Fair is like similar with the club day in the answer. They have like like 200 something clubs in the field and presenting themselves. And then I like it because um they have like a clear distinct, clear categories of for every club. So like they they um categorize cat categorize each club into like maybe um hobbies careers cultural thing and yeah it's really easy for people to like uh, walk in the involvement fair and then um based on their interests and find their ways to in the in the in the fair and yeah Yeah, I totally agree with what Natalie said. Um, for me, I know I heard a lot about like the club culture at Berkeley before I got here. Um, and I knew like I should have expected like it to be very like hard to get in. But um, when I actually got here, it was like quite a big culture shock for me. Um, I knew it would be bad, but I didn't know like how like hard it actually would be. Um compared to like what people would say. Um, I would say at Berkeley, depending on what type of club you're trying to get into, um, it is pretty hard for transfers to get in. For example, Berkeley has a lot of consulting clubs, um, not just for business, but for other majors as well. And those ones tend to be um, a lot more selective. And so um, some of the clubs you can tell when you like go up to them and talk to them during like the club rush weeks, 
that they're not as transfer friendly. They really want like first years or sometimes even sophomores. Um, they just don't really accept transfers or if they do, they'll accept maybe one or two transfers into the club like per cycle. So it is like very competitive and very hard to like get into. But that's not to say that it's like impossible. I definitely have some friends that have like gotten into these clubs. And um, when applying, like I would definitely recommend a mistake that I made was I applied to only like a very few like select clubs like I applied to maybe two or three clubs but um when I was talking to people a lot of them applied to like multiple clubs just because of how competitive it is you're not really guaranteed to get into like the clubs that you apply to and a lot of the clubs they have like three rounds of interviews like a casing interview like there's like five rounds to get into these clubs so it's like it's a very like demanding process um, within the first two or three weeks of school but um, I would definitely like recommend like applying to like multiple so you have like more of a chance of getting in and then another piece of advice I would give is to also try to apply to like a social club on campus um, outside of like the academic clubs that you're applying to because those are like a really great way to make friends and meet people for example I know some people they're in like um, there's like a ski club on campus or like a climbing club or just like any like social type of club because that's just a great way to like get away from the stress from like your major and just like have fun and meet like other students um, so that's also like a piece of advice I would give and then um, outside of that even if you don't get into the clubs because it's like really hard your, especially your first semester there's always other things you can do at Berkeley like there's a lot of research opportunities or I'm involved in like our Haas student government or our case comps so there's also other ways to get involved as well outside of just like the clubs as well um I don't have that many offer like I just haven't like really interacted with clubs uh Berkeley I know that it can get pretty tedious. Um, but I'm going to talk about like outside of schoolwork, there's still like a lot of like opportunities, like club like things that you can do at Berkeley. And like, for example, um, you can do you can do tutoring and maybe like one day you can get on course staff on like classes. Um, you, there are like a lot of opportunities on research per se. Um, and I think that as a transfer, yes, you kind of have a disadvantage on that because, you know, you're, you're probably going to be here like two years, two and a half years, and then, and then just like get out, right. You, you graduate. And that's not like, obviously like those organizations want you to like be here, be there as long as possible. Right. But as as a transfer, I would argue that like you bring like a different perspective to a lot of people, uh, to 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 like an organization that is that wants like these like different views, right? Um, you know, you you come in to your school, um, having like probably a different life experience with a lot of people, um, who entered freshmen. And I I would say that that is what a lot of organizations want to see. Um, so I wouldn't get too dis disencouraged by, you know, um, maybe like, oh, it's like very hard to, you know, do some sort of things. Yes, there's going to be like bumps. But um, I think like if you try like really, really hard, or you can, if, if you like try, you can probably do it. Cause I know like a couple people like last year, this year that like got research, like first semester, like, you know, people get on course staff, which is notoriously hard at Berkeley um, as a transfer. So I would not like, there are like definitely people like who do that and you can probably do that too, so just want to add that there yeah just like a little more on the research like I'm actually am doing research because like as a transfer instead of like you're since you're not a, like a, a freshman you are able to apply for research opportunities your first semester if you're like able to find out about it on time and like I did find out I applied I didn't get it but I was lucky enough that the professor 
like let me like help out with the research and like be there for it and he's like he's telling me that if I apply for next semester then he's like there's a pretty good chance that I'll, I'll be on like the core team and I was like really <laughs> so I'm excited about that even though I'm like not officially a part of like the research team I'm glad that I'm able to help and just be around them yeah so just make sure if you transfer to like any UC if there's research opportunities that you hear about or find out about you can most likely apply and like at least at least you can apply the freshman can apply that's that's a one up on them yeah okay i'm gonna add a little bit about my perspective on my I mean my experiences like in in i guess sjsu i'm not gonna lie that was crazy to hear about three rounds of interviews for clubs i did not know that <laughs> um um i think i think my experiences with joining clubs um in my free university i don't think it was that difficult like um like in that way of three rounds of interviews i don't think it was it was particularly that difficult i think um i think it was pretty easy to join a club if you want if you really wanted to join a club but obviously it kind of depends on i guess like um, because I know that in SJSU, the clubs are very di diverse, like there's social clubs and there's like major clubs. Um, so, but I think like from the clubs that I've joined, it was, they were pretty easy to get in. It was just mainly just signing up for the interest form and that's it. Like you're in and you just join the social events or like you just join the, the stuff that they're doing. Um, and also to add to research, I did research in my undergrad too. It was okay. I I kind of I kind of was that person that like I transferred in and I kind of didn't see that opportunity. So I I submitted my application late and luckily the person the person that was like uh the coordinator, they were like to be honest, we we're kind of we have like a few uh spaces open. So you're lucky that like we kind of need more students. So I was like, oh my god, thank you. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, uh, and then I joined some other programs too. But I think I think joining programs, I don't know if that's the same as joining a club per se. Um, but but yeah, I don't think at SJSU or well, my experience in SJSU, I don't think it was it was that difficult to join a club. I think you just had to find a club, and if you liked it, then like you know you know just participate but if you don't then there's other clubs out there for you if you if you want to join them and like side note there's like a lot of clubs at berkeley even though like they're major specific like mine there's like berkeley environmental economics and policy group and but they host a lot of events and like they're all like public so even if you're not in the club you can just show up so it's like yeah and it's, it's just the members of the club who like host everything plan everything and they get like to meet the people one on one more often that like go to those events. But like you can still show up even if you're not a member of the club. Thank you for all our panelists sharing their answers. And since you guys are all like, since we are on the topic of clubs and everything around surrounding that, the following um question for that is: How did your university help you integrate? into the student body as a transfer student, such as with transfer events or just orientation in general? If I can start off for this one. Um, this is more specific to my major, but if you get into Berkeley for Haas as a transfer, they actually have an integration program over the summer. Um, so how it works is there's usually 100 um, transfers and then they'll take around 50 transfers for this summer program. It's called um, Pre-Core for Haas. And so basically you're going to be taking two courses, which is like quantitative and qualitative prep for business. And then throughout the six weeks in the summer, um, it'll just be like prepping you within those two areas for your upper division classes. And you also get like time to meet all of your fellow Haas transfers so that when you get, um, get into classes like your fall, you kind of already have like a supportive community of transfers. And um, I did this program um, this past summer and it was a really great like opportunity for me to like meet other transfers and have like a close community that I can like talk to and that I knew before the school year actually started. So for me, that was like a really like 
great part of like integrating into Berkeley and going into my classes because then I got to know other people and I could ask for like advice or tips when we were like going into classes and a lot of like the transfers that took those classes are pretty close um still and so that was really helpful and then they also like taught us some skills and refreshers on stuff we should know for like our upper division classes so um that was really helpful and then um as a transfer at Berkeley we also go through like a week of like orientation um it's not the most helpful but it's also like a great way to just like meet students and like find other resources as well but yeah um integrating in that case was like a little bit more simple but then obviously like with just classes and everything it, it does take a little bit of time to like adapt to everything once you do start um classes um in engineering there's also like a similar program in Haas I think it's called T prep um I didn't go uh, but I know like a lot of people went and they like made like a lot of new transfers friends in like the program um in engineering there's also like specific like transfer senders for that and they like help you with like advising and what and so forth and so forth so I think like the support up to transfers is like pretty good um I know that we have like a new like resident building like majority for transfers so if you're living there it's like very very easy to like meet new transfers and just like form like some community with other transfer students um so that's about that for support um for orientation i didn't go so i, I don't know I, I can't answer you on that um yeah so i did agree that i forgot what's called like gbo golden bear orientation it was mostly like a for fun thing just to like introduce you to the campus meet other people but if I had the choice, I think the last day was, like, the only useful day because that was, like, all the departmental stuff where you actually had to, like, meet your college and, like, all the professors in there and they're the advisors within your college. Um, Yeah, so, like, the Natural Resource College, which um my college at Berkeley, they host, like, a lot of events, like, pretty consistently. Like, every two weeks they're having something, studying together. And, like, if you are struggling to, like, make friends, like, I don't really have that many friends, but, like, my friends are in my classes. I'm not lonely or anything. It's fine. But <laughs> they, there's a lot of events. They definitely care. And, like, your advisors, I think they're harder to reach because it's, like, Berkeley. Like, if you want to, like, the more general advisors, they're, like, a little more difficult. But, like, for my college, they're almost always available. They try to make themselves available because it's a smaller school. And they, they'll def help with their your transfer process. And they're always there ready to, like, help you with anything. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> I guess to add on, um, at UCI, we do have something similar, I believe. It's called like transfer boost. Um, they help you out with it's over the summer and they help you out with getting used to um learning about the research opportunities on campus and just like about campus in general. Uh we also have different opportunities for students to apply to be like a, a mentee like as a transfer student um so for me I applied to become like an ACE mentee for uh the school of social ecology and I also applied for um STEAM so that was also to help transfer students out uh so I feel like UCI has a lot of opportunities for transfer students uh to get more um involved and uh, help out with their transition to uh, a four-year institution. We also have um, a transfer center, which hosts like different events for transfer students. And they allow you to like pop by anytime to get like maybe some snacks and stuff. But it's very useful in the sense that they help you out with, oh, maybe your resume building or how can you connect with professors, uh, research, and even like having your own mentor. Okay. Um, in my experience, I'm gonna be honest, this was like 
this was like two years ago for me. So, so like, if I forget some details, like, bear with me, okay? I'm gonna be honest. I think my orientation, my transportation at SJSU, I'm gonna be honest, it was a bit chaotic because, um, Cause like I remember that they did check you in. They give you like a little like a little goodie bag and stuff like the SJSU. And then um, and then at that there was like a like a kind of like a little period where you could look at like, um, this like street or like it's called Seventh Street, but um, where you basically just like you see the tables and all the clubs and programs and stuff that they have, which was pretty cool. Um, but it was a bit overwhelming as a transfer student. I was like, oh my god, there's so much stuff. And do I have enough time to look at everything? Um, but, but trust, but trust you do. E either way, like, we still have weeks of welcome on the first couple of days. So it's fine. It's fine. You, you'll be fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, but I, I say it's chaotic because I'm not gonna lie. Like, there wasn't, like, like a major, I guess, orientation for you, like, for your, just your major specifically. We were just kind of shoved into, like the ballroom with like other majors so I felt kind of sad when I made friends with like STEM majors and then we had to part ways because they were like oh go into your like departments or colleges and I was all by myself and social sciences um so yeah it was it was a bit chaotic um in that sense of like I made friends and then we kind of just parted ways um and then also um When when we did like I guess psycho like when we when I got together with like all the other psychology students and we did like orientation about like oh what classes you should take for like the fall semester, um, I am not gonna lie I kind of didn't come prepared because I did not know like okay it's because they tell us your like they tell you like the courses that they recommend you taking first. And then they give you some time, like, if you have, like, a laptop or a phone to kind of look over the courses that, I guess, are open or, like, that are viewable to, like, I guess, take for the fall. And so I didn't know. So I was over here, like, oh, my gosh, struggling with my, like, phone, like, scrolling. <laughs> um, and, yeah, so it was, to be honest, it was kind of a little bit chaotic for me. I think maybe I would have been better if I had, like, my my laptop or maybe if I had better signal in in the building I was in. um but overall we made it <laughs> um and then I think in, in the end I think they just uh kind of gave us like a little tour like around the campus and then and then they just called it a day and that was it that was basically it <laughs> Um, and for me, so yeah, I, I'm the last one, should be. Um, for me, kind of add on to what Audrey say about like the transfer, like center or event or something. Um, for my major MPB, like, uh, yeah, MPB, um, we belong to the College of Biological Science in UC Davis. And for, pe for people who are in, in the College of Biological Science major, we, we are recommended by our counselor to enroll, to register for a class called like directed group study during for this quarter, the fall quarter, our first quarter in Davis. So in that class, it is mostly where you can meet like many transfer biological science major. And then I also have a lot of friends I met in the transfer orientation that that is also taking the same same um directed group study class with me in that class, and then for that class, um I think it's a very good way to learn more about the campus resources. It's sort of like, um like integrating yourself into um like knowing more about the campus resources. And I know this week um, we learn about oh how to get more involved in research because you know research is pretty important in biological biological science right so we learn more about resources time management and something and I definitely think um, they did a good job in having this class and like, like sort of a space that we can find a transfer community and then also get more insight of um how to get more fit in, in the campus. Also, um, I feel like, cause I'm now living like sort of on campus. I live in like a transfer housing. And I feel like this also helps cause you're having an environment with 
like other transfer students in the same place. And then you can also build a really close uh, relationship with them. And yeah, and you kind of just feel more belong and more integrated as well. Thank you so much for talking about your experiences. And now moving on, what is your experience networking with current students slash alumni as a transfer and what opportunities have been given to you? Um, I think for me, it's been pretty easy, honestly, because uh, the Rouser, like Natural Resources College alumni, they're like very close and they want to work closely with like the students if they're available. Um, Because a lot of them do offer like uh, uh, part time work positions if like you qualify and they encourage us to apply like they like to show up to alumni events and like actually like reach out to students like they look at our resumes they're like you I want you and I was like okay <laughs> so they're like really fun and nice in that way and then like, when it comes to students I think everyone within Rouser kind of just wants to work with each other because we even if we're not in the same major like there's a lot of overlap in like our classes um so yeah it's it's really not that bad if you're in like a smaller college I, I don't know I don't know what I'd say for like the like larger colleges like letters letters and science yeah Yeah, I kind of agree. I think there's a lot of um opportunities at Berkeley to like um network with alumni. And I think it's like a lot more easier than at Tianza, especially because we'll have a lot of like alumni and um professionals within the industry come into our classes and talk, um, which is really cool and something that I like really liked about like getting about my classes here at Berkeley. So like for example, like two weeks ago in my sustainability class we had like the CSO of Starbucks come in to talk to us and in like our accounting class like we'll have we've had like four or five different like professionals within like the big accounting firms come in and talk to us and then um, you have the opportunity like after class or afterwards to like go up to them and ask questions and like talk to them about their experiences which is like really nice aspect of like the classes here um, and then there's always a lot of like alumni events on campus as well um so there's sometimes there's like alumni mixers or like other events where like alumni will come and a lot of times they're like really willing to like give advice and help um the current students out so like I definitely recommend like reaching out to the alumni because they're a great resource and they're always like really friendly and really open um to meeting students and then even for Haas I know that there's um a new program that just rolled out this year with like an alumni mentorship program which I'm a part of so you get paired with an alumni from Haas and then you can meet with them however many times you want just to like get advice on like your career goals, like what classes to take in clubs. So that's also like a really nice aspect of it. So I think like the whole like alumni experience has been really nice for me. Yeah, I think networking is pretty big at Berkeley. Um, and oftentimes there are like a lot of like just big companies going to Berkeley uh just to like maybe like look at like do a introduction talk on like who they are um and just encourage you to apply um i know that like all the fan companies um go to like career days and just you know encourage you to apply so even though like the job market is not that good right now you still like you're still like standing out and you have the opportunity to talk to um, you know, people in the in the industry and see um I guess get advice in some sort of way. Um, I know that a lot of some of the classes um in the department are also supported by the companies. So you get like pretty much like one to one um help from engineers. Uh for example, Apple, um, who helps like you to like Oh, go through like what your design is when you're implementing like some some sort of things and that is very helpful for your technical skill and allow you to like network in some sort of way so that you know you're you're standing out when 
you know, you're you're fighting for a job in some sort of way like that. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just go next. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I, in my experience, I've never got to network with an SJSU alumni per se. I think at SJSU, I think it's a bit difficult because I know there is the like alumni association at SJSU, but like I don't. There really isn't, I guess, any opportunities for alumni and I guess current students to interact with each other, or I at least I don't, I don't know about. Um, but current students, I feel like that's kind. Of, it's a little bit more easier to kind of network with current students because I feel like, like, um, especially if they're around like your major, because I feel like everyone's just trying to help each other, like, just graduate and succeed and. It's a little bit more easy. It's a little bit more, I guess, accessible to kind of network with the current students that are already there, um, especially when you ask questions about like, oh, like, what do you think about this class, or which, I guess, which class should I take first, or, or stuff like that, or like job stuff. Like, let's say, like, I know LinkedIn, like, they have certain jobs like you can see on their profile, and if you're interested in them, then you could like probably ask about it, um, or ask for just advice. Um, and also SJSU, I know SJSU a lot provides a lot of like like i guess like uh career stuff that you could get networking like for example they provide like the job pro the job shadow program which depending on what you're interested in like career wise they could set you up with like someone from that career field that you just shadow for a day and if it goes well like you got their linkedin or like you know you connect with them a little bit um and yeah and and they have like other stuff too but um but yeah, that's that's currently what I know personally. Um, but yeah. That sounds great to hear from all our panels about your personal experience with networking. Um, so our follow up question kind of to that is what clubs or activities were you in at De Anza and like how did you like end up getting into those type of positions within the De Anza community? And actually, oh, turns out this question is actually morally tailored to um Isaac, but anyone else is free to answer is can be free to answer as well. Um, for me, so like how I got to be a peer mentor with Impact with the Anza, it was mostly because like my first year, I'm gonna be so honest with y'all, I was like the only person within like our cohort who was like helping out with stuff and just or just there to talk with like the current mentors and with the counselor for our program. So I think it made it really easy for me to like transition into this position when like. Audrey and like others were like leaving and transferring so yeah I think just spending time with the people in the program which just makes it easier for you to just step it up one more time well I, I guess I'll go next um so two main things that I did at the ANZA is I did tutoring and I was the vice president of student government there um I guess we, like how I did it was just that like I was involved in student government before being like before like going to like try to become the vice president um so I, I like I guess an advice would be like just be like dedicated and like if you're interested in doing like that position or like that field um do that um and same for tutoring um I kind of like help people and there was an interview process, but if you like show that like, you know what you are doing, then you, you, you have like a pretty good chance of like doing that. Um, is there another, is, was it just that or? Trissy, hello. 
Um, yeah, it was basically mainly just that and I guess how to like maintain your GPA while you're doing all those activities. Okay. Um, maintaining GPA wise, um, just I mean, I um I would say, I just emphasize that like GPA is probably like the most important thing, uh, when you transfer. I think like regardless of what like college, you go to, like GPA is definitely like the first thing that they look at, right? Um. Advice wise, um, just stay on top of your work and just like be sure that like you're like on pace on like what you should be doing, right? Um, I guess another like advice would be like if you know like the professor is like really hard, right? Like I know like the ends of physics is known to be very hard, especially with like um Francis. Um maybe like look into like R RMP and like just be sure that like you're you can like manage the workload in that specific quarter if you know that you're taking like extra hard classes so that's that advice I guess yeah honestly like my tip for just maintaining your GPA at the end so even if you're like doing all these things like for me, I was just a peer mentor, but I had a lot of, like, at-home work um, outside of school, things I had to take care of, like, a lot of outside responsibilities. I think my biggest tip would just be, like, knowing your limits and, like, having a balanced schedule. If you, like, if you have um the opportunity, like, the privilege of having a balanced schedule. So, like, I would, for my major, it's, like, interdisciplinary, so I would have, like, one social science class then like an actual like physical science or life science or but like I would never have like two physical sciences at the same time but like that's just because like I have the privilege of doing that with my major but I know for like other STEM majors you're gonna have to like double up triple up on that so it it gets hard um I also want to add on to the question because I see like if there's how can you reach a high position um I am not sure about whether you are, you want to do um the clubs or activity because like for college application or something. I mean, most people do clubs or activity because of like college app, right? But I just want to emphasize that like you don't do something just for the sake of doing it. Just make sure that you are you really want to do it. You really know why you are doing that club or activity, not just for college app, because. That could be, like, it's not from your genuine, it's not from your genuine desire. Maybe you you want to do it because of college app, but I feel like the um the college admission office they they can tell if you are doing it, it like they can tell if that desire is from yourself or you are just doing to impress them. So yeah, I just like a like a suggestion or emphasize is that oh you just you 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 really want to know um what do you want to get from it from the club or activity I, I feel like if you really enjoy or are passionate about that thing you can naturally um reach a higher position and yeah that's my kind of advice Yeah, similar to what everyone else has said. Um, as far as like GPA wise, like um, I agree with what like Isaac said. Where um, maintaining your GPA is like very important for transferring. Um, a lot of like what I heard when I was transferring is like your GPA is like the baseline of what they look at, and then what will set you apart is like you know your extracurriculars and like everything else that you do. So like maintaining that GPA is like really essential for like basically like, kind of like qualifying to like um for the other parts but then also um when I was talking to like my mentor when I was transferring um if you ever do have something come up where you like have an issue like maintaining your time and your classes and it's like 
a, something personal, there's always the additional comment section within the UC application. Um, I personally did use like the additional comments for a part of like my application to like explain something that happened like personally. So like, just know that that's like also always there because like these colleges understand that like stuff comes up and stuff happens. Like you can't always like predict what's gonna happen. Um, so like if you need to like write something in the additional comments for like explaining why something happened, um, I would definitely recommend like doing that and like adding that in there um, for your GPA. But yeah, just like as far as like managing your time and everything, just making sure that you know like what you're getting yourself into. So like if you're taking a very heavy like class workload, um, it might be a lot more difficult to like get involved in like more extracurriculars if you have like a lot of like units going on in that class so just making sure you know what you can handle so you don't overdo it and like burn yourself out in the end that can also like really impact your grades um and then for the second part of the question like how to get involved in different activities um I would say like for me what I did like my first quarter was just kind of like trial and error I got involved in a lot of things but I like through that I found which ones I wanted to stick with and then those ones I like continued putting more and more effort and that's how I was able to like get higher and higher positions but um it was just through a process of like trying different clubs and different organizations and like finding which ones I was really actually passionate about and I actually enjoyed and then those ones would be like the ones that I like um stuck around with and I would try like harder and then try to move up um so like similar to Isaac I was also in DSG I was the vice chair of the programs committee and then um in mentors I was also like the um the senior mentor of programs and then I also did like some clubs regarding like my major so um it was just like kind of figuring out which ones I got I was really interested in and I did those I agree with uh, what um, the other mentors have to say, uh, especially with like finding something that you're passionate in and what interests you. It's uh, very crucial when you're trying to join like different clubs and activities on campus, because I feel like uh, when um, the other members or the officers see that you're putting in the effort into their club or organization, um, you're more likely to um, be able to apply for those higher positions just because they see like the amount of effort you're putting into it. Talking about the balance of GPA and activities, um, in everybody's opinion, how important would you say GPA and extracurricular activities are when getting accepted into a university as a transfer student? For, um, for, oh, sorry. Uh, oh, no, sorry. <laughs> you okay. can go first. Oh, okay. um, I'm only going to start first because mine's like kind of a hot take on this because I don't think extracurriculars are as important as you think. And your GPA is only like, Oh, really? It's a factor. I don't want to say it's a small factor, but it's a factor. Um, Because for me, my GPA was, like, wobbly, but, like, I was able to maintain it, like, decently high for, like, I of course I did my own research. I applied to Berkeley. I looked, like, oh, what was, like, the minimum GPA, like, of my acceptance? That type of thing, because I was stressed. But I think it's a, a lot of, depending on what school you go to, like, just aligning yourself with, like, the mission of the campus and like and just really having a really good understanding of like yourself and your values goes a long way and if you're able to like communicate that through your PIQs then like you'll have an even better chance of getting in of course like you can't have like a really bad GPA that's just like they're not going to go through with that but yeah I don't I wouldn't stress too much about extracurriculars or your GPA it's like as long as you're doing decently well then they'll look at other factors Um, I think I like, obviously like having a good 
GPA and you know impressive extracurriculars could like definitely like help your application, right? But ultimately, what this what the universities wants to admit is like they wanted to admit like a person who can grow in their university, right? They like you don't have to like cure cancer or like something like that, right? So I think the most important thing really in order to stand out is just like don't think about oh I have to like do a checklist of like extracurriculars or like I have to like do like oh I have to score 4.0 in order to like if I want to get in Berkeley or if I want to get in LA I need a 4.0 I need to do x y z in your application checklist and you have to write this essay right that's like that's 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 not what the universities want and that's not like how we should be approaching it, right? I think what instead you should do is find something that you're interested in. Find something that you're passionate about and what you wanna do so that, and obviously maintain your GPA because you're learning um, and just just do it, right? Just Just be involved in that and like, don't like um don't be like okay i don't want to say that it's object oriented but like maybe if, if you focus on the process of like what we've like what you've learned in the process um at the end i think the result would actually be better than object oriented so just my take Yes, I also so agree with what Isaac is saying. And to be honest, GPA versus extracurricular, I definitely say GPA first, GPA first, classes first. And I think it's the same thing after you transfer also. Like schoolwork, I think you need, you really need to put them as your first priority. I feel like, I feel like, like, I don't know if you guys ever heard of the first thing that the admission officer see is your GPA. So yeah, I feel like I, you 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 guys maintain your GPA first over the extracurricular. I feel like extracurricular is maybe less important than GPA, but yeah, I feel like GPA comes first before extracurriculars, and for extra and for extracurriculars. I feel like, yeah, quality of the quantity. Like you don't want to have like a checklist like Isaac say, like you don't want to join too, that much thing just for the sake of joining. But you just want to do something that you genuinely want to do. So yeah, that's my effort. Loki, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with uh, with Natalie real quick because not gonna lie, I was over here like struggling like oh my god like extra cooler GPA right, um but then when she said like uh at the admissions officer I was like oh yeah like yeah like I get that because because I did talk to like a Stanford admissions officer and they kind of said like well if you don't have this like because they do like a cutoff I guess like at a certain GPA and like if you don't receive that GPA then you're basically not admitted so um which that's crazy but like but like period I guess I mean. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think, I think GPA is a little bit, I guess, more important, but also like, I don't want to stress you guys out. Okay. So like, you know, mental health first. Um, so cause like low key, like I understand, like I was there too, where I was like, oh my God, I was stressing out over like a B plus like girl, I was still passing, but you know what? It's okay. Um, but yeah, I feel like having that perfectionism, like if you're struggling, like let's say you have a B plus in a class, like it's not the end of the world. One B one B plus in a semester, that's okay. Or in a quarter, that's fine. You know, nothing that's gonna happen. It might it might it might make your GP a little bit lower. But it's not it's not the end of the world. Again, it's not the end of the world. Um and again, like uh again, I feel like extracurriculars are not really as important, right? I feel like um as long as you try hard in your schoolwork and honestly, like Natalie said, if you're passionate about doing something, I feel like that goes a long way than just doing it because you're trying to get into like, I guess, like a more prestigious college or something. Um, when I was thinking about this question, I'm not going to lie, like I was thinking of it in a grad school perspective because I was thinking about like, like I feel like GPA does kind of matter a little bit more, but 
but I don't want to start skipping steps. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just say what it would. I'm just, I'm just keep it like that. <laughs> I agree a lot with what Natalie and like Kimberly had said about like how um finding something that you're passionate in. Like, of course you can have, I really like the point that Natalie brought up with like quality over quantity. Like, of course you could have like 10 different things that you're involved with, but having something to write down and not just say like uh, on your like PRQs, maybe say like, oh, I am a leader, like expand on what that means. Like, what does leadership mean to you? How were you involved in that position that taught you like, how to become a leader and stuff like having a specific example and not just like saying that oh I did this without elaborating in, on it and I will say like with GPA um there is like a cutoff it depends on what school you go to uh generally each school has like a specific like a different GPA requirement I know like some schools they're like 3.4 but then other schools like more competitive schools maybe like biology will be like uh, we're going to cut it off at like 3.6 or something so it is like crucial that you do maintain like at least like around that range or like even better is like above that range but um with GPA if you do have like a, or like if you do really show that you're passionate in like your essays about like being in that career path or like um trying to show like what you offer to the school uh, I feel like that would help you more even if you have like a, a lower end, a GPA on the lower end. Yeah, I would definitely say GPA is very important um, and to like make sure that you like obviously focus on your grades. But like like people mentioned, if you like um, like get like a bad grade in like one class or it's like something minor, like don't stress about it. Um, I think what colleges really cares about like consistency over like your two years. So if it's just like one time, like you have a W or you just get like a small bad grade, that's like totally fine. Just like make sure it's not an overall theme that they can like see reoccurring like like every single quarter. That's usually when it might like be a red flag. Um, and like um like everyone mentioned that some schools do have a cutoff and I think it's very dependent on the school you're applying to and also the major you're in because I know certain majors they have a higher like GPA average that they cut off at so um like just depending on that like um your GPA requirements will be different but I would definitely say like prioritize your GPA and then um if you can like do get involved in extracurriculars um I know everyone said this but I really liked what Natalie said where it was like <laughs> quality over quantity everyone said that but um I think sometimes if you're involved in too many things, it can actually hurt your application in some aspects because you're just spreading yourself out too thin and you can't really have a great enough impact on the things that you're involved in if you're doing too much. So like, for example, for me, I like left out a few things in my application just because like I didn't think they were relevant enough or I didn't think I had enough of like an impact to write about it. So I just like left them out of my application. Um, so just like make sure you don't overdo it when you're like doing extracurriculars. Because um, I do know some people that like try to do every single thing possible that they could. And then in the end, it ended up hurting them in like their application process. So um, just make sure like maintaining your GPA and then like um, making sure what you're involved in, like you actually enjoy it and you're having an impact and can actually like talk about it in your application. Thank you for all our panelists' answers. And the following question to um, just your transfer experience in general is that, was it difficult to apply for financial aid as a transfer student? And with financial aid, like how was it covered? Like how much did financial aid help cover your cost of tuition? I want to say for me, because I think we... Uh, for those who like transferred recently, like this past or like this fall, I think like the the whole. I mean, even everyone who did FAFSA, we we know it was a struggle to get FAFSA done because I don't know what they were doing. But I think um after I got my financial aid application in, it was yeah this year was you know, <laughs> but I think after I got it through, um uh, my personal experience at Berkeley that my financial aid was able to cover my entire tuition. And so, like, it was it was a very small margin. I think there's, like, 
I think it's crazy that like I'm just six dollars over my tuition amount. So like everything's covered. And like I just have six dollars extra, which is like good. At least I don't have to worry about anything. They gave me they sent me a check for six dollars. Um but other than that, I think if you have any like financial aid problems at Berkeley, they're really on top of it. Cause when I was applying for um CalFresh or like Snap EBT EBT, yeah, they like got on that. They like I called them and I was I was telling them how I was having like trouble with it. And they literally like called the whoever was in charge and they got me my CalFresh because like I couldn't afford groceries. And they were like, they were instantly like I had trouble with Medicaid. Like Berkeley called them and they were like, here's my info. And then I got that. I was like, they're really on top of it, which I was very surprised. Like within like an hour, everything was covered. I was like, okay, thank you. So if you need help financial aid, like your school mostly like they'll they'll really be on top of it i heard irvine had like issues though this year so i don't know like <laughs> i can speak on that uh i will say unfortunately uci's financial aid department isn't the most responsive um uh, from my perspective as like a low income student it can be very stressful especially with like the wait times i think the longest wait time i've been on like the phone call for financial aid is like two hours so it's very hard to like get a representative and uh but now they're doing walk-ins so you can walk in and um have your financial aid questions answered um for me i did also apply to like different scholarships which really helped um basically cover my cost of tuition here and that could also be a really big factor in I know deciding to what university to go to, like which university might give you like the most financial aid to cover your costs because each university is different. Even though we have to do like the same FAFSA application, um, some institutions will give you more aid. Like for us, we have something called the UCI grants. Um, different universities may give different grants uh, depending on your, it's not EFC anymore, it's SIA index. So depending on what, what number you get on that index will basically tell the university how much aid you will be receiving. But it's different in terms of like if you get Cal Grant, that's like a whole different story, but it, it will be different depending on what school you go to. Yeah, as term, in terms of like financial aid, I know Berkeley is like pretty good at like giving financial aid. I know um, for me and like a lot of other people I know, like I got the highest financial aid officer from UC Berkeley because they're usually pretty good at like giving um, like a pretty lenient like scholarship or financial aid offer. Um, but it like this year it did take a really long time to get out because of like how like how different the FAFSA application was and they decided to change it this year. So like hopefully next year for like when everyone else is applying, it'll be a lot like a lot more of a smooth process. Um, but then also like everyone else mentioned, there's other um resources as well to help like fund. So for example, like scholarships, but then um like EJ mentioned, like EBT is like a great thing to apply for when you get into like college um especially like groceries are super super expensive especially here at Berkeley so like any help you can get is like great so um I would definitely like recommend applying for that and then like Berkeley has like the food pantry as well um but yeah just like applying and like reaching out because you do have to like figure out like what programs are available um especially for like for if you're applying to CalFresh for EBT um and you're doing it like individually. I didn't do it through the school because I didn't know you can do it the way that EJ did it. But I did. I just applied directly through CalFresh. You have to be very consistent. I had to call them like five or six times before they actually picked up my call. And I had to wait on hold for like two hours. And then it took like a whole another two or three weeks. And like I know a lot of students have the same issues. So just like being consistent, like researching into those opportunities. But um. There are definitely like a lot of different like opportunities on campus. You have to find them um to help afford your tuition. For Davis, um, I think they are pretty generous with um financial aid as well. Like some of my personal story, because I was picking, I was like picking between UC San Diego and UC Davis, but UC Davis do offer me a 
more more financial aid. That's why that's one of my reasons that I chose UC David. And yeah, I feel like um like financial aid or something also kind of depends on whether you're an international student or a local or not. Because I know um maybe some of us here are international students and wow, the tuition is crazy, I know. So I'm lucky because I'm considered a local student. And that's why, and I'm also a low income student. That's why I got like a much higher like financial aid. I was very, I was very grateful for that. And um, if you do need more financial help, um, I think Davis is also very friendly to offer like so many scholarship opportunities, work study program. I know like, we have like we actually have a lot of like student workers here, like student working on campus as like a barista in a dining common, or we have like a um um like a, a college um transportation system. Like we have student drivers as well, and they do they they earn um a decent amount of money also. So yeah. There are so many opportunities um, there, here and there. So, yeah. Sounds great. And then on a lighter note, how was your experience making friends? And where did you find that you were able to connect with people and make your closest friends? Is it okay if I start? I'm gonna start first. Okay. Um, okay, the way I made friends was by classes. Like, I think I think that was it. Like, we had the same classes, and then we usually had, like, group work, and we had to talk to each other. So, um, that's basically how I made friends. Um, sometimes we would have, like, the same couple of other classes, too. So... Like, that's kind of how I met, like, my current best friend. Like, like when I transferred, I literally had no friends at SJSU. I was like, I was like, oh, my God, spooked. Um, and then we had this one class together in the morning. And then we had, like, this three-hour gap for, like, to our next class. And then I didn't know. I didn't know until, like, two weeks later. And so I, I saw her, like, sitting by herself. And I was like, oh, my God, I know you're my class. I was like... I was, and then I asked her if she had um, this other class because I saw her there too. And then she said, yeah, and we just clicked. And then we had sushi and that three hour gap that we had. So yeah, I think, I think, I think for me, it was just making friends was just in classes. So if you have a class with somebody, you know, check up a little conversation. I don't know. <laughs> I agree with what Kimberly had to say. A lot of the friends that I made here was like through bonding, um, through classes on like tests and stuff. Like, oh, what answer did you put for this after the test or exam? Um, but I would say, yeah, our, in classes, even though like for my major, our class size is usually really big. Um, just talking to like the people next to you you never know if they're going to be your your newest like friend that you make um and i would say like in college um from what i've heard though is that usually your college friends that you make are the ones you have for life so i do highly encourage you to get involved with like different organizations as well um because you can also make friends that way through like social clubs um to see like if you click and stuff but yeah i feel like for me, I was nervous about making friends as well, like in a university, since it's such a big campus. But once you find someone that matches like your vibe, yeah, <laughs> um, it can be easier to transition. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think um, for me, I found that I'm a lot of the people I've met are through like the transfer community because I find like the other transfers are really like supportive and nice. And like, like I said, the transfers, especially that I met over summer, like everyone's always trying to like help each other out or like support each other with like 
whatever we need help with. So um, for us, like for um, like all of the transfers within my major, we all have like a really big group chat that we have. Um, and if anyone ever has like a question or something they need help with, like they'll just message it in our group chat, which is like really nice. Um, and that just shows like how like supportive everyone um, is. And then outside of that, I think it's just like putting yourself out there and getting involved to like meet people. So um, if you like, if you just go to class and go home, you're not going to meet many people. So it's like um, trying to either go to the events or get involved in some kind of like, if it's not a club, like some organization or something on campus where you have the opportunity to meet other students. Um, but it does like take like personal effort to like go out and put yourself out there. Um, because I will say like sometimes it can be a bit difficult to meet other students um, if you're not like making an active effort to do so. Um, I think for me, I mostly make friends by like joining clubs and um, also, um, yeah, joining clubs. And also I'm a Christian. That's why um, I joined like Christian fellowship and they usually very welcoming. So um, yeah, I make my like close friends there. And then um, I have a roommate in my transfer housing as well. And then um, I have two other housemates. Like we we live in I live in a four per, four person apartment, and now I feel like I got really close with my housemate because like sometimes um when they cooking they just ask me oh do you want some uh some something to eat I cook like extra thing and then I'll be like oh okay sure yeah so I feel like that's very sweet and yeah I feel like making friends. Um, if you want to make more closer friendship, I definitely encourage um to apply for like transfer housing or simply like having a roommate that like because you guys can spend many time together and develop a really intimate friendship. And then um I feel like in class it is really hard to to make friends during class. I feel like because like first of all the big class size, and then it's always just like high bye friends you cannot maintain a really um um close friendship I feel like because seems like um most people you meet in class they maybe have their own social social circle or they just maybe just want to go to class but not really care about making friends or yeah, so I feel like it is easier if you join like a smaller, smaller community, like joining uh, clubs and um, yeah, finding the people that are around you. Um, yeah. I think like um, the easier ways to like meet new friends is um, definitely clubs. Um, like doing like just maybe going to like a social club and like oh we're gonna go um you know play a sport or something um that really like helps with like bonding with other people right um and I would argue that like classes also really help um like especially if you're like all transferring together like usually you're gonna take like one or two classes that are like everyone has to take it or like retaking it or some sort of way and that like builds like bond during the way. So I think those two are like probably like the bigger ways. That all sounds great about like how to build like a better community at your universities or colleges. Um, just going back to like the UC application process, did you all use the 20 spots on your UC application? Which is like, I assume it's the extracurricular portion. Uh, I'll go first. Um, I did not, and I don't think um, a lot of people that I knew did either. I don't think anyone did, actually. Um, it doesn't really matter whether do you fill it out or not. Again, it's really like when they look, right, they're not going to look, oh, because you filled 20 spots. So we're going to 
let you go into the university. Um, it really, what matters a lot more is the experience and what you've learned from those things. Yeah, I think like the UCs definitely value a lot of like time commitment and like they only really care about like after high school. And for most people, that's just like two or three years. And you're not going to have 20 spots to write in there. I think I use like three and yeah, uh, no, they're not looking for 20. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely agree. I don't think I know, I don't think I know anyone that used all 20 of their um, spots. I'm trying to look at how many I use, but um, this kind of goes back to what I said earlier. I think you have, if you have too much, um, it'll like, it might not look as good. Like it might, you might be spreading yourself out too thin. Um, I remember when I was talking to someone who had already transferred when I was applying, they told me like to not use like all 20. If I used all 20, like it wouldn't, it would hurt my application um so for me I think I used 13 of the spots but then five of those were like awards I won through competition so those weren't really like extracurriculars um so just making sure you only like include what like like the extracurriculars that you're like passionate about and you had an impact in um is really important so yeah just I don't think I know anyone that used 20 spots If no one has anything to add, moving on to the back to the housing that um, Natalie was talking about, what is a good time to start planning for housing? Um, for me, actually, I don't, I didn't specifically go into housing like until maybe three months before the decision is out. Because when I apply, I was not really thinking anything about the housing. I have like zero idea about that. And yeah, I think it's not too late to think about housing until maybe the decision is out. Because you still got like maybe a month or two months to think about um, whether you want to do on campus or, or off campus housing. And um. Maybe, maybe, maybe it is just um a bit um special for me because I I have been having the idea of doing on campus housing maybe like a few months after I submitted my application and I know that for like on campus housing it's like guarantee right so you don't have like you don't need to like do a house hunting stuff. But I feel like maybe it will be a different situation for off-campus housing because you you're gonna need to like do house hunting, and I know like like in Berkeley or like some other schools they have like a very competitive um house hunting process, and you got, you really need to start early to um look for some good deals for the apartment. So yeah, I'm gonna let other people talk about this. So, but for on-campus housing, I feel like you don't need to stress about that that much if you are really determined to go to on-campus because it's like guaranteed for um UC Davis, and I feel like for other other UC as well. So yeah, I can speak for the off-campus housing, um, or just housing in general at Berkeley is is really bad. Um, I know like schools have like other UCs have like guaranteed housing. Um, but I know Berkeley just had their like transfer housing added, but you're not like guaranteed to get in. Um, and even if you, I know a lot of people that apply to like on campus housing, they get offers that they just really do not like, and so they have to look off campus. Um, I didn't apply to on campus. I just directly started looking for off campus just because I knew I wouldn't be able to afford to live in the on-campus housing here at Berkeley. Um, and I would definitely say like, after you know like where you wanna go, especially for Berkeley to start like looking for housing right then, because it's really, really hard to find housing here at Berkeley. I know a lot of the continuing students, they start looking in like 
January, February, like the year before they're trying to get in. And our decisions don't come out, I think, until like March or April. So we're already like a little bit behind all of the continuing students in looking for housing on campus. And then um, like when you get your decision, you have to figure out like what roommates, because you won't get like matched with any roommates like you do when you get on campus housing. So like reaching out to people to figure out like who you want to room with first and then just going on like tours of different housings. I think it took me like two or three months of like searching before we found our place um and it's just really expensive so if you're looking like within a budget you have to like do a lot of searching before you find something that you really like because um I think it depends on like what everyone wants because if you want something like closer to campus cheaper it's like a bit harder to find so you just have to do a lot of research and like searching in but it is doable I would just make sure like once you know where you're going and you know that you want to do off-campus housing to start like looking into it as soon as possible. And also if you do apply for on-campus housing at Berkeley, I would also recommend just looking at off-campus as a backup in case you don't get an offer that you do want. Um, because like all of my roommates had that situation. They applied on campus, but ended up doing off-campus. Yeah, I can talk more about like how my experience went for Berkeley. So, like, I immediately, like, started looking for housing. I applied for on-campus housing at Berkeley. Even though I knew, like, I'm, like, very low-income. I'm probably, like, one of the low lowest brackets. And for me, I knew I wouldn't be able to afford off-campus housing. And I knew, like, the best chance of me being near campus would be on-campus with the housing scholarships for transfers with, like, the new transfer housing. And, like, I didn't get that. So what I like my only option was to commute because like that was like the cheapest, most affordable way of me to like still continue going to to my in-person classes. So like if you have any questions about like commuting to Berkeley, because I live in San Jose, it's like an hour, 20 hour, 30 commute uh, back, back and forth. And so like that's like how I'm dealing right now because I didn't get any offers until like super late and they were still like out of my price range. So I'm just like I couldn't. okay oh oh sorry. I, was good, sorry I was just gonna say I can speak more about for specifically Irvine yes we're similar to Davis where we do have like for transfers it's two years guaranteed uh for the ACC apartment area so for the ACC apartments um that's where like mostly juniors and seniors live um, we're not allowed to live like right on campus because that's where um usually freshmen and sophomores are um housing there so it's a little further off campus but it's still like walkable um for but of course it depends on your financial situation like if you can afford it um usually financial aid though if you do get a refund that can help cover your costs for like housing here For our last and final question, just a takeaway and advice for all of the students in the panel. What are things that you wish you had known when applying or what are some common mistakes that you see other people doing? Yeah. I could start something I wish I had done differently and that I always um tell like people doing the application process so if any of you are like second years um working on the UC applications is to like get started early um I I did I started my application right when they came out and then I like took a big gap and pause and kind of procrastinate on it until the last minute and I would definitely not recommend doing that at all because you, I know like for me, I like rewrote two of my essays because I just did not like them at all. And you want to have chances to like um, make new drafts and get people to like read over your essays. And then um, even with the extracurriculars, they take a lot longer to write out than you would think um, because there's like a word limit. And I didn't think that the extracurriculars would take me as long as they did to write out. Um, so just like for that, like, um, if anyone's like doing the application process or if you're going to start it next year, try to start like as early as possible because you're going to want to make changes. You're going to want to have people read over it. And it's just really, really stressful if you try to cram it into the last minute. Um, 
because I know for me I was like working on it like Thanksgiving break and it was it's just not not very fun um but yeah and it also gives you the chance like to reach out to people who have already transferred if you want to like get advice from them um if you start early so that's also like a pro to that Um, I think my piece of advice would just be like researching the different programs like pretty thoroughly because there's a lot of info you can find out about the school and specifically your programs and like what you're interested in before like actually deciding on which school you want to go to or at least after which because like there's a lot more details when it comes to like how a program might align with your academic and career goals. And I think just understanding the resources and like courses involved with that program will make your journey overall just a lot easier and a lot more comfortable for you. Yeah. I agree with what um y'all have said before. I like especially with EJ, like with research, like researching into what you want to do, because I don't know if this is the same for other universities, but once you transfer here specifically to Irvine, you can't switch majors. So, or it's like very, also very hard to switch majors. Um, so just finding something that you like are passionate in and like want to do or in researching the different um, programs that they offer at the campus can be like very important because you, you will be kind of like, you may be like stuck here for like two years and you're already having to like graduate with the degree that you're already um applying for um I would also just recommend like if you are like applying to any like EUC or CSU to just go for it like even if you feel like oh my app isn't that good or it's not as good as like I feel like other people would write I would say just go for it and just submit something um to like any like you see that you're feeling like you want to go to because you never know if you're going to get in and if if anything, you can say like, oh, at least I tried to to uh, get into this school. Okay, really quickly. I think somebody had a question about like honors courses at De Anza. Um, Did anybody take the honors course or do the honors program? And did they think that it was advantageous to their application? I wrote this in the chat, um, but I applied to the honors program at De Anza and I took two honors classes, micro and macro econ. But I know you have to take five to six classes to finish like the certificate and the classes I wanted were never offered so I never finished the program. But um, in my opinion, I don't think the De Anza Honors Program like adds much weight to applications at all. Um, it might like just add like a little bit of a boost like, oh, you were like like going above just a little bit. But um, I don't think it's like a like a very determining factor. But I know like maybe some of the other panelists like took classes in Foothills Honors. I've heard like really great things about um, their honors program, especially because they have TAP, um, which is like a program connected to UCLA. So um, I don't know if any of the other panelists want to talk on that. Yeah, I also heard about the programs, um, the honors programs from Foothill. And I think I have several friends that uh, also in the Foothill Honors Program. And yeah, I also heard a lot of great things about that program, like really increase your chance to get into UCLA. And I think that friend I know, he is also in UCLA right now and he was in the Honors Program in Foothill. And yeah, I mean, I think, I think you can apply as a DeAnza student. So if you have time, I feel like you can definitely go and try it, try it, try it out. Yeah. And if you want to go to more like prestige schools like UCLA, yeah.
if nobody has anything else to add to the conversation or like last minute tips, we are just going to move on to the panelist contacts. So all of our panelists have graciously offered to provide their contact information if you want to reach out and ask about like questions or things that you're thinking of after the panel. Um, and that's it below. But that's all we had today. Thank you so much to our wonderful panelists from all different places of California and our students for coming to this transfer panel. It is recorded and it will be posted later on. But with that said, like we're all good to go. So thank you so much, everybody.